This year, and uh, you're listening to Surf City, and Joe joins me in the studio, and has just, uh, like I said in my intro, fought his way against headwinds, Joe, to get here. Yes, I'd say uh, 20, 30 kilometers an hour at least. <laughs> See, and I'm tired and hungry. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for joining us, and. Um, you know, why don't we, actually, why don't we start out by, I mean, a lot of people see this city as a difficult one, one, one to cycle in, uh, to walk in because of the causeways, because of, of the hills. Why don't you just to actually trace your route to getting here? Oh, well, uh, that's very easy. I, I, I could say that I, I left work. Uh, I live on pretty much the same street I work on. So I jogged home and got my bike gear on and grabbed uh, a few slices of processed cheese and some chips and, and uh, I jumped on my bike. And uh, I turned back down Waterloo Street and on to Cliff Street and down uh, Garden Street across the overpass. I think it's called the Viaduct, I guess. And up onto uh, Somerset. I was I met that head when it was fierce, so I turned uh, right on the Cranston and uh, just a shortcut and shunted uh, Somerset a bit. Turned back onto Somerset on the Millage Avenue. Uh, and then turned right on University and dodged some canoe-sized potholes and some, you know, uh, people that were looking ahead at the construction and up by the hospital into the University and into the Student Center and I locked my bike to uh, a railing because the bike rack is, has disappeared since I've been here last. And one of the things we'll talk, chat about later in the show, but my bike racks are actually a big challenge from somebody who's, who's actually cycled around the city a lot too to actually find a place to lock your bike. So, I mean, you're one of these people that you confront the challenges of, of biking here. What, what are the kinds of things that you, you think about when biking around the city in terms of hill avoidance, uh, fighting headwinds? Well, let's go back a few years when uh, I helped form a group called Active Transportation St. John with Dean Price and, and Craig Campbell and uh, uh, James McMillan, who's, who's left the city for greener pastures. Um, my philosophy with avoiding hills is like uh, I used to follow a, a route map in Toronto called the, you know the Toronto suggested bike routes and uh, exploring the city on my hybrid bike and that whole philosophy was just using streets that existed you know traffic on streets and sometimes you had to go from point A to point B through industrial parks and and really uh, you know uh, sparsely populated uh, areas and residential areas and flat streets. So I said, you know, let's look at doing that here in St. John and just like focus on the flattest streets and uh, to get to fairly efficiently from point A to point B, but, um, you know, to avoid the hills, which is a big barrier for a lot of people who are beginners or who don't have the strength to, or the proper bicycle to get up those hills. So that is a big, that is a, one of the big barriers. I was speaking with a woman today in the shop who's from the prairies and she's about to embark on a long bicycle tour. I said, tell me one give me feedback on the bikeability of St. John. He, she just said hills, hills, hills. <laughs> She's from Edmonton. <laughs> I know that uh, Don Desrud, who's a political science professor here, and he, um, he, he cycles a lot out, and he's uh, the assistant uh, uh, director of graduate studies. And he actually cycles out here a lot in the summertime, and we were talking mm -hmm. last year, because I worked at the university last year in the summertime, and started the bike, and, and I was actually fighting that, that one big hill coming out here a lot. And uh, he actually, yeah. yeah, and he actually, described a route that he took in which he was able to actually avoid most of the major major hills and actually probably got here faster than me even though it was an indirect route, right? So mm -hmm. is it a lot of thinking like that? It is and Samuel Davis Davis Boulevard is the is the, the you know the, the cyclist killer and I know a very strong university student who he said he proudly said today I made it up that hill and uh, you know if fighting a headwind and you know a pack of books and a laptop and it's it's challenging but there are ways around it and uh, you know St. John is people work on the beaten path they're just look at the map bird's eye view now we're talking a lot about just like cycling the city streets now and a lot of the challenges if you're say commuting um, what, can you tell me you know a lot of a lot of people um, do off-road biking here and find little hidden gems and places that are great to bike and um, what are some of the good uh, good trail systems in St. John that you do a lot of biking on? Well, I mean, Rockwood Park comes to mind because I've spent hundreds of hours there, um, hundreds of thousands of kilometers uh, through there, and uh, that is probably the best 
mountain bike destination for cross country style, and uh, you know, there's trails that are, you know, there are some beginner trails in there, but it's very advanced and technical. Uh, but there are some wide carriage roads for those who just want to pass through, and uh, you know, it, you can even ride a hybrid, you know, with a narrow tire, with a country tire on it, uh, through there quite, quite easily most times of the year. That is like a destination. Yeah, I, I think the city under markets a bit with that. The, the bottom third of the park certainly has a lot of commercial value with the pavilion, the cafe, and things like that. But the upper two thirds of the park is, you know, the best. You know the best, the closest we can get to forest, like behind the university. It's very, it's, it's very crowded with you know deer and uh, you know there's some uh, you know developments going through. But it's uh, it's it's my favorite place to bike, and it's you know I'll be biking there till my days are done, till you know I can't anymore. And uh, I actually understand that we're we're taking you away from a bike in the park tonight. Yeah, that's okay. My friends are enjoying the the, the uh, you know the, their first ride of the season as a group, and uh, I'll join them next week. And, uh, yeah. and can you tell us a bit about because uh, I know there the, you know you do do your own cycling off road on your own, but uh, also there are a number of bike clubs in the city, and and there are organized rides in in Rockwood Park. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the club thing really are, are just loose, loose it, you know, packets of individuals that, you know, we call in our business ride partners. And like you want to have as many as possible that do what you do and or if you're willing, willing to explore other uh, avenues of cycling, road cycling, BMX, you know, free ride, cross country, mountain biking, what have you, you have to have quite a, you know, quite a selection and people's schedules are all different and, uh, so that's rather than clubs, and there really aren't any clubs that I know of. There are you know, groups of individuals who ride together, and uh, that changes from year to year as people come and go. Right. And are those are those uh, most of those clubs advertised in some way so that, that new people were that were going to wanted to to join rides could to, could come out and, and ride? Not yet. And uh, you know, with organizing anything in St. John. You know, your, somebody's name has to be attached to it, and that has to be sustainable. Um, certainly, through our, our 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 my workplace, we do have. You know, you can consider our thirty Thursday night cross country rides a club. Uh, we don't have a club per se where you have to pay to you know dues and wear a, a shirt. Although that's been tried in the past. Once you put up structure, cyclists, you know, in my opinion, and I'm certainly that way, are pretty anarchistic that way. Right. You know they like some you know liberty and freedom and they don't like structure so much and, and like flexibility and you know escape freedom right. from, from those. But if somebody was went down to bike works and said are there other groups of people that ride around here and how could I hook up with them is, is that kind of culture there? Oh yes of course and that's kind of my role where I work and in the community it's bridged very well and I you know have no problem with you know giving people's uh, you know pointing people to certain websites where they could uh, you know to a post like there's mountain bike forums and road biking forums that you could register for and there's certain you know forum threads that you could follow for ride planning and ride partners yeah right and, but that a lot of work uh, needs to be done in that area of course we have a small population and we have relative small packet of uh, cyclists and bikers yeah because I, I just remember several years ago I started doing some rides in Rockwood Park and I, I would show at, at times where I knew there was groups of people going out mm -hmm. on rides and there was varying levels of, you know, uh, from beginners to more advanced to, to very advanced. And, right. and I, I accidentally got in with a, a group that was more advanced and actually took a tumble in the park because I was trying to keep up because I, I didn't go with the right group. <laughs> and does that it. kind of culture still exist out there? It does, but uh, they're very, you know, that is because of the nature of Rockwood Park and the technical nature, the aggressive trails and, uh, you know, the sort of lack of maintenance and the growing in of the trails, uh, that has just come about survival of the fittest. You know, people go there for a fitness workout. It's not so much to be elite and show, you know, here's, you know, eat my dust. It's because they want to ride as hard as they can for two hours and they have the machines, the bikes are, are built for that now. But there is, uh, you know, there is, what I want to do is make that more accessible to every, everybody. So when I plan, for instance, my Tuesday night road ride, I want to include, you know, urban mountain bikers, hybrid cyclists, you know, ro occasional road riders to make it open source. As much as that's possible, I don't need, it's a work in progress. It's research and development. Right. Is it doable? I don't know. 
All right, well, what I want to do now is just take a, a break in our chat and, uh, and play a tune, actually, uh, but first by somebody who's playing, was it Mike? On